What did we learn in the first week of the NHL season? Not a lot, but some teams looked really good and some did not get off to a great start. We'll discuss three surprises so far this season on today's episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. We are your team every day. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into a Western Conference Tuesday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. We are your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the course of the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off of your first purchase. On today's episode of Lockdown NHL, we will discuss some surprises to start off the NHL season. We'll talk about the hot start for the Vancouver Canucks, Connor Bedard and the Chicago Blackhawks, and how the Edmonton Oilers rebound from an 0-2 start themselves. My name is Seth Topal, your Tuesday host of Lockdown NHL, and we have finally gotten to the start of the regular season, and we've got games under our belts with the first week of the season getting underway last week. And uh, now we are just pedal to the metal until we get to the uh, start of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Then we'll start to whittle some teams down from there. And there may not be more of a surprise, and I say it kind of tongue-in-cheek because it's two games. There may not be more of a surprise in the Western Conference than how the Vancouver Canucks started their season started off by beating the Edmonton Oilers in two straight games uh, as they uh, put up 12 goals in that span. They beat uh, Edmonton 8-1 to on the first night of the season and then were able to pick up a 4-3 to win in the second game of the year. And so you look at the standings, and through two games, Vancouver is leading the Western Conference in goals scored with 12, tied with the Vegas Golden Knights, in that category, and if you look at it for Vancouver, it has been a lot of the guys that you need to have step up that have been performing well so far. Obviously, Brock Besser had four goals in the first game of the season. He's got five points through the first two games. Elias Pettersson has six points through the first two games, but also Quinn Hughes, four points. JT Miller has four points as well. And so you're getting really solid production from those top-level guys uh, that, at least through the first week of the season, has Canucks fans uh, looking like they are maybe starting to figure some things out a little bit. And the fact that it came against the same team twice maybe uh, lessens the fact that uh, both of those wins happened a little bit. But still, first night of the season... You come out and you just beat the brakes off of the Oilers with an 8-1 to performance against both goalies. You get four goals, um, and then you know you, you do essentially the same thing to them the following night. So they've been getting the, uh, the good production from the top-level guys, which is huge. The goaltending has been doing well through the first couple of games of the season. Now, as I say this, the uh, Philadelphia Flyers with a 2-0 lead over Vancouver through the end of the first period. But through those first couple of games, you've gotten good performances from both Thatcher Demko, who unfortunately had to leave his game early due to injury. But then this is why Vancouver's pickup of Casey DeSmith was a big one. Because now you have a guy that if Thatcher Demko misses some time, Casey DeSmith is somebody that if he stays healthy, can really help them out from a goaltending perspective as well. And so for a Vancouver team that is hoping that they finally take a leap under uh, Rick Tockett and that they get back to the postseason conversation that uh, everybody is expecting them to be in, a great start through the first two games. And uh, there's still plenty of room, I think, for this Vancouver team to grow um, and to uh, continue to put these types of performances Together, you've got uh, a guy like Andre Kuzmenko, who had 38 goals last year. He has scored through the first game of the season. 
up and down the lineup, you have had a ton of different players that have uh, produced and contributed to the offense so far this season. And so if they continue to get that secondary production in addition to those top-level guys, uh, this is a Vancouver team that uh, I think could make some noise in the Western Conference playoff picture, uh, depending on how the teams in front of them, at least last year, do um, here as the season unfolds. Now, the big thing is going to be what is the status of Thatcher Demko going forward, um, and obviously if there are any other injuries to uh, other key pieces, that could be something that uh, leads to the Vancouver Canucks not being able to keep up that same level of performance. But at the same time, um, it's a Vancouver team that, you know, I think we've been waiting for this for the uh, the last few seasons, just seeing them use all that talent and uh, be able to be in the conversation. So a great start for the Vancouver Canucks. And uh, as I go to double check, Demko just coming out of that game against the uh, the Oilers due to the flu bug. So no panic there, but uh, all eyes, I think, on Vancouver so far to see how long they can keep this going. And the more they do, the more that should help them uh, with a potential push for the playoffs as well. Now, Vancouver not the only surprise so far here uh, in the Western Conference. There have been plenty of surprises on the good end and pre- plenty of surprises on the bad end as well. But there obviously are a ton of eyes on Connor Bedard and the rest of the Chicago Blackhawks. So we'll take a look at how Chicago has done to start the season so far as we continue today's Western Conference Tuesday edition of Locked on NHL after this. Today's Western Conference Tuesday edition of Locked on NHL is brought to you by Game Time. And if you are a fan of living in the moment, you may have encountered the uncomfortable feeling it is trying to get tickets to a sporting event the day of. You can't find any sort of deals on tickets. And worst of all, you end up showing up to the event and you're obstructed. Your view is obstructed by a post or a pillar or something along those lines. Game Time is here to help take those sorts of issues out of the ticket buying experience by offering last minute ticket deals plus views from all of the seats in the venue, lowest price guarantees, event cancel event cancellation protection, job loss protection and more. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today's episode is also brought to you by AG1. And folks, I cannot highly enough endorse AG1 for its ability to bring you all of the vitamins and nutrients and energy that you need to get through the day all in one scoop. All it takes is one scoop in the glass of water each and every day for you to get 75 high-quality vitamins and nutrients directly into your system. Plus, best of all, no crashing at your desk over the lunch hour. AG1 can help you be your best all day long. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, Then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Again, drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Check it out today. Welcome back to today's Western Conference Tuesday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. We again are your team every day. Thank you for tuning into today's episode, continuing to look at some of the surprises so far for the Western Conference. And this may not necessarily be a surprise, but Connor Bedard has gotten off to a uh, pretty good start 
for the Chicago Blackhawks so far. But Corey Perry actually leading Chicago in points with four points through their first two games. And Chicago is two and two on the season. Connor Bedard with one goal through those first four NHL games. Tyler Johnson with three goals himself. And you have goals from Ryan Donato, Jason Dickin Dickinson, Taylor Radish, Nick Foligno, and Cole Gutman as well. And so for a Chicago team that I think is feeling the jolts, the jump, and the juice from having Connor Bedard in the lineup, Bedard is appointment viewing at this point um, for Chicago. Anytime he does anything with the puck, people want to see what he's going to do next, which I think has given this Chicago team a little bit of life and led to them being able to put together some solid performances to start the season, including beating the Toronto Maple Leafs 4-1 to one in their most recent game, uh, something that the uh, Minnesota Wild had a little trouble with in their most recent game. But you look at the goaltending as well. Peter Mrazek and Arvid Soderblom both holding their own in net for Chicago, who through two games has a 944 save percentage and uh, has allowed just nine goals. So a Chicago team that is playing some pretty good defense, and uh, if Bedard continues to add some excitement to what that team has out there, now it's not going to be a team that competes for a postseason spot this season, but it is certainly a team that is moving in the right direction uh, towards being one of the... Uh, legitimate contenders in the Western Conference. And so anything that you can get alongside Connor Bedard, and especially those acquisitions in the offseason leading the way in scoring as well, uh, that certainly is going to lead to um, some excitement for this team. But another guy that I want to mention who's off to a strong start, not necessarily in the points department, but just in his overall play is defenseman Wyatt Kaiser, who was another draft prospect that was given an opportunity by this Chicago team. And he looks like somebody that could be a major portion of their decor uh, as his career unfolds. And so for him to be playing well as still an extremely young player, that's something that is going to really help um, this Chicago team out as well. Now for Chicago, obviously the main objective for them is to continue to build talent around Connor Bedard. And so if any of these young players are able to generate some excitement and generate some scoring chances of their own, a couple of years down the line, this Chicago team is going to be a problem. Uh, for the rest of the uh, not only the Central Division, but also the uh, the rest of the Western Conference as well. Uh, in addition to Chicago looking pretty good out of the gate, um, the Arizona Coyotes, another team that is uh, having a good start to the season. Now they did lose two to one to the New York Rangers, but they started their season off by beating the New Jersey Devils on the road four to three and have already gotten tremendous contributions from Logan Cooley, who uh, through the first two games of the season has three points. And so for this Arizona team, they are one that is expecting to be closer to the postseason conversation this year. And so beating teams like New Jersey on the road, finding ways to get those games under their belts. It's a great sign of progress for them uh, so far to start this season. Obviously, a long way to go uh, with just a couple games for most teams under their belts, but you can't ask for uh, a better start to the season than going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the uh, New Jersey Devils and the New York Rangers and uh, coming out of the process relatively unscathed. So wanted to give a shout-out to the Arizona Coyotes as well. Now, for those teams who are not off to as good of a start as they had hoped for the season, again, the season is young, so there is time to make improvements um, and uh, get back on track. But we'll take a look at the team that was the uh, unfortunate 
uh, beneficiary of two solid games for Vancouver to start the season. That is on the way as we continue today's episode of Locked on NHL after this. Today's episode of Locked on NHL is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. And with a ton of action in both the NFL and the NHL, there are tons of opportunities for you to have your bets increased to use on player props. Maybe Connor Bedard, a chance for goals and shots, or some of the other high-profile stars of the Western Conference, whether it be Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Kirill Kaprizov, they are safe bets themselves. And FanDuel allows you to do all of that on the easiest app to use in the sports betting business. Make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get the season kicked off. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Final segment of today's episode of Locked On NHL. Once again, we thank you for making Locked On NHL your first lesson each and every day of the week. Edmonton Oilers, a bit of a rocky start, uh, to say the least, for the Oilers through the first two games of the season. And honestly, in just looking at what happened in the first two games against the Vancouver Canucks, a lot of what we we're talking about with the Oilers coming into the season are things that uh, have indeed come true. As uh, you look at the Oilers scoring so far outside of the likes of Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid, they've scored three of the four goals for the Oilers so far this season. The only other player that has scored a goal is Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And this is an Oilers team that's, is going to need to get production from those guys not named Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. This has always been the case for this team uh, through the uh, the last few seasons and also the goalie departments. Uh, both goalies, Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell, have been roughed up so far this season. Um, Oilers goalies combining for a 750 save percentage. Stuart Skinner has allowed eight goals in his two games and Jack Campbell allowed four goals in his. So it's an Oilers team that's going to need to get some better goaltending, going to need to get some more contributions in the lineup because those two guys cannot do it all on their own. And obviously there's plenty of time to get things corrected, but it kind of makes you wonder if this Oilers team is going to be able to finally get to that Western Conference Final or Stanley Cup Final, as uh, many are likely predicting that they will by the end of this season. Uh, Obviously, with Dreisaitl and McDavid, your chances are better than not. But it just goes to show you that you got to have quality team around two superstars in order to uh, win games in this league. And it has been an interesting start to the season, to say the least. And so. Like I keep trying to say, some things we've observed through the first few games, but these are certainly not the rule. These are just some things that we've seen uh, through the games so far. One of the other teams, I think, in the Western Conference who has been under the uh, most pressure, other than the Edmonton Oilers, is the Los Angeles Kings, who have been off to a a bit of a rough start themselves, but their problems all stem from to goaltending as well. The Kings so far have lost to Colorado 5 to 2 and the Carolina Hurricanes by a score of 6 to 5, a game in which the Hurricanes only managed 19 shots and yet they still ended up coming away with the win. The goaltending so far for the Kings, Phoenix Copley gave up 5 in his only start, Cam Talbot gave up 4 in his so far. So again the Kings the goaltending is going to need to improve for them 
if they are going to be a playoff team come the end of the season. And so what have we learned from the first week of the NHL season? A lot of the things that we were talking about that needed to change this season have still been the uh, general rules um, so far for this year. So when will they change? When will we see uh, these teams look a little bit more like uh, we expected them to? Well, that's certainly up to um, certainly up to them. And the final team that is kind of off to a sluggish start is the Seattle Kraken, who have scored two goals through three games so far as uh, they lost to the Avalanche by a score of... Um, uh, actually, they play the Avalanche today. They lost the Golden Knights to start the season 4-1, to one, then the Predators 3 nothing, and then the St. Louis Blues by a score of 2-1. to one. And through those three games so far, uh, you have... Jaden Schwartz and Jared McCann as your only goal scorers. Maddie Beneers, no points through the first three games of the season. So Seattle, another team, and their issues stem from needing some scoring uh, for the uh, the early part of the season. Philip Grubauer has been great, and uh, Joey Decord got one start as well, and uh, he ended up doing just fine. So the goaltending has not been the issue for the Seattle Kraken. It's been the fact that they have not been able to put any in the net and so again it um it's a situation for the kraken where what we discussed and who will step up to help maddie Beneers that has been an issue so far for them um in addition to goaltending for both edmonton and for the los angeles kings and so those questions remain for uh, all three of those teams in the early part of the NHL schedule. Now, again, plenty of time to get everything back on course for all of those teams and plenty of time for the teams that we discussed that were off to good starts to continue those here uh, as the NHL season unfolds. And so uh, make sure to stay tuned to Locked on NHL as our esteemed panelists guide you through the uh, start of the NHL season and bring you all the big news that uh, happens on a, an everyday basis here on Locked on NHL. Uh, make sure you follow us on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the course of the week. You can find the Locked on NHL podcast Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Podcast Network.